Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to Show It Better. In today's video, we are going to take a look at some Photoshop tips for architects and something that can improve our workflow in Photoshop. So let's start. My name is Steven and I am the creator of Show It Better. And in today's quick video, I will explain uh, some tips that I use in my normal workflow of Photoshop so it can be much, much faster or that I've learned over the years. The first tip is the quick mask tool. So uh, as architects, we are always making selections, selecting trees, selecting people, selecting textures to, you know, to cut them out from original textures. And that process, if done incorrectly, can take a lot of time. So we need to improve that and shorten it a lot. What I do, when I have very complex geometries to select, maybe kind of like trees, the hair of, of, of a person, or very complex geometries, what I do is, uh, before starting with the lasso tool or the marquee tool or any selection tool, I start with the quick mask tool. So what you do is press Q on your keyboard and you're gonna see that your layer is going to turn red, right? So what you, what you want to do is press B on, after pressing Q on your keyboard, you want to press B for brush tool and start painting in your canvas. And you're going to see that uh, you're, paint, you're going to start painting red, right? So you're going to start painting some red spots. And everything that is red is everything that's not going to be selected or that is going to be selected in your work area. So for example, if I have a person, I am going to start the, the, the hair of a person or a tree. I'm going to start painting in that that tree, you know, in a very fast way with a very small brush. Maybe painting in some hair strokes, maybe painting in um, you know the beard, anything, whatever. And after I have that, I press Q again on my keyboard, and you guys are going to see that that painting becomes a selection, right? So it's much much quicker and for example when you have hair it, sometimes it's not very precise to do it with a lasso tool select each strand of hair so I recommend that you use a soft brush and with each strand of hair it's there's going to be a more or less a determination of your selection and after you press key on your keyboard uh, there's, there's going to be a better uh, selection figure object or anything so that is the first tool the quick mask tool the second tip is the opacity numbers or I don't know what to call it so when you want to lower the opacity or increase the opacity of a layer uh, sometimes you know what you normally just do is go to the opacity uh, thingy and you know just turn it down or turn it up that is basically it right but we're trying to save time so maybe if you're a very very slow computer that I know sometimes it can be it can lag so much that trip when you just slide you know hold the slider down it can be four seconds it can be 10 seconds but those 10 seconds are precious so you don't want to waste that time so what I recommend you do is type in the opacity you want right so you want to type it in so if, we're, if you type in one it's gonna be 10% opacity if you type in two 20% three thirty percent etc 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 but uh, Steven I want 25% you know what do I do then you press 25 very quickly 2 5 right very quickly not enter just 2 5 or 38 or 3 8 right and you're gonna achieve the opacity much much quicker and so sometimes when you're working and you want to just see what is behind the layer but you don't want to grab your mouse and everything you just uh, press 1 on your keyboard for for 10% opacity you say okay then you press again zero for a hundred percent opacity so that is a small tip but that saves you a lot of time one two three four five six etc 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 the next tip let me see let me see let me see the next tip is the color range selection so I think I don't know maybe in some tutorials I've said this but uh, when you want to make a selection it's sometimes very hard to make it uh, by you know with our lasso tool to select every color everything that is that is uh, in, in our that we want to select or 
you know, it's very hard to do it with a one tool as well. So another method is color range selection. When you uh, select by colors, it makes it much, much easier, much faster. So what you do is press W on the keyboard for one tool, then you, 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 uh, then you right click and press on the option of color range. Then a window pops up and it's gonna tell you, hey, what color do you want me to select? Make a selection for you. So you're gonna say, hey, I want the yellow, I want the green. So everything that Photoshop recognizes that is green in that, in, in that the interface is going to select it. And if, you, if it's on that layer, and if it's on that layer, then you're gonna have the selection of all the green spaces. But let's say you want only the green, but there's, let's say that there are five hues of green, right? So there's a very dark green and there's a very light green. So you can add to the selection, right? So you select this light green, then you click on the plus tool for the, for the sample and you select on the dark green and you know the mid-tone green and that is going to increase your selection and it's going to be very fast so I think that is a tip that will increase your selection process as well so we have the quick mask and we have the color range selector you know those are are golden for me I think you know, I, I can drink a beer with with the color range tool, I can drink a beer with, I can go partying with a quick mask tool. This next tip is not so much of a shortcut, but it's more of a, uh, something that I really like to do when I'm doing more like collages, digital illustrations, not so much renders, but, or maybe diagrams. So what I like to do is I like to import a grid and like to import a grid into my illustrations, right? Like sometimes I know I don't know why, but a grid just makes it the image feel more architectural, right? So it just gives it a sense of scale, sense of you know, drawing this. Just a black and white grid. That's what I like to do. One option that you can do, obviously, is just go to Google, type in grid, and you can download that image and import it. But what I do is I create a new layer. I go to the blending options and I go to pattern overlay. The pattern overlay option, we have different types of patterns. Among those, we have a grid. I always put some grids in my images and that tool just makes it very, very easy, very fast. And I can scale the grid too. I can change the colors, I can change the blend mode and it looks very, very interesting. And our final tip is more or less something I do very often, but um, I like the workflow, so I would like to tell you more. It is uh, overlaying a sketch on on Photoshop, right? So it's it's something very common for us architects to, you know, go into our notebook and start sketching out something, and and you're like, oh, I wish I had this in my presentation board, I, where I just wanted to upload it to my Instagram or something, or I wanted to impose it over a picture, right? So I have a photo of I have a photo of this plant and I want to impose a, a picture of some drawings right some drawings that indicate the size or the material and what I can do is I can just start creating the drawings on my sketchbook take a picture of them a normal iPhone picture with a cam scanner app whatever app is similar then you import it into Photoshop after you input it into Photoshop uh, you just go to the blend modes and go to multiply and as you guys can see all the white background is going to disappear and the black lines are going to stay which is very cool now let's say if you want white lines what you can do is uh, press the W key on your keyboard for the one tool then erase all the white space and press control I to invert the selection and make all the black lines white and that is a very very easy process I recommend you do it why because I think we are in a stage where we don't want you know the normal diagrams we don't want the normal renders we want a mix of the two right so I recommend you always do this just create a drawing a sketch drawing then you place it on top of your uh, rendering and it's gonna have much more life it's gonna have like much more uh, care if you will it's, it, it looks different so those were the, were the five tips. Uh, so the, remember the quick mask tool, the opacity numbers, uh, 
the color range selection, the background grid, and the sketch overlay. So I think these are very small tips, but that are going to improve your workflow or make you make uh, have you make better images. And yeah, that is something I like. If you liked this video, uh, comment on it or what other tip you would like you normally use, apart from the ones that we already know, right? So that is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. So if you are interested in a course, uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, I took, I created a architectural digital collage course uh, with a lot, around three hours of content with project files, with uh, you know small tips and tricks, and with texture files. So if you are interested in taking the course I invite you to go to my uh, link down below if you want it or if not you can also access all the files of all the tutorials that you guys see on YouTube and all the long form videos two hours three hour videos going to my patreon page and subscribing so if you don't it's okay I like you being on YouTube and nothing thank you guys for watching I'll see you on the next video.